Dr. William Edwards Deming, was a physicist and statistician, attaining great influence in the fields of management and statistics. Deming began working in Japan in 1950 and was instrumental in building the Japanese industry into an economic world power. This diagram was explained by Deming in his book, Out of the Crisis. Here is how it works. If you focus on quality and improve the quality, rework is reduced, the cost goes down, and productivity increases. As customer satisfaction goes up, market share increases, and the profits go up. That results in increased market share and helps companies to stay in business and provide employment. The concept of the PDCA cycle was originally developed by Walter Schuhart. It is often referred to as the Schuhart cycle. It was taken up and promoted very effectively from the 1950s on by Deming. Later in Deming's career, he modified PDCA to PDSA so as to better describe his recommendations. Dr. Deming said that hard work is not enough. What is needed is a transformation of the prevailing style of management. A leader must understand the system he or she is attempting to manage. Without this understanding, the system cannot be managed or improved. Understanding that all the parts of a business are related in such a way that if you focus on optimizing one part, other parts may suffer. You must also understand the concept of variation, which includes common cause and special cause. Problems arise when management reacts to common cause as if it were special cause variation. Knowledge depends on theory. Experience teaches nothing without theory. Leaders must understand human behavior to motivate, coordinate, and manage people to optimize the system. The various segments of the system of profound knowledge cannot be separated. They interact with each other. Management has tended to be short-sighted in their thinking. They are more interested in the problems of today and give little or no thought of the problems of tomorrow. Constancy of purpose requires that management be committed to long-term thinking instead of just changing strategies to make the quarterly report look good. Organizations must allocate resources for long-term planning, research, and education and for the constant improvement of the design of their products and services. Adopt the new philosophy means change. The changes needed in industry require a complete new outlook by raising the expectations of quality. Management must understand that quality costs less, not more. Quality does not come from inspection. Mass inspection is unreliable, costly, and an effective quality must be designed and built into the processes preventing the effects rather than attempting to detect and fix them after they have occurred. To truly cease dependence on inspection, you must bring your process into control. Once you build quality into your product, you do not need all of the inspectors to segregate bad products. Price alone has no meaning. Change focus from lowest initial cost to lowest total cost. The policy of forever trying to drive down the price of anything purchased, with no regard to quality and service, can drive good vendors and good service out of business. Management must work toward a single source and long-term relationship with suppliers. Quality starts with the intent of management. Management and employees must search continuously for ways to improve quality and productivity. Putting out fires is not improvement of the process. It shouldn't even be necessary. Thus, both training and education are vitally important. Management must provide the setting where workers can be successful. Training at all levels is a necessity, not optional. How can anyone do their job properly if it is not understood exactly what their job is? 
training is an investment. Unfortunately, when things get tight financially, training is the first thing to go. This costs more money to the company in the long run. Managers should lead, not supervise. Leadership is helping the worker and machines to perform at their best ability to create quality parts. A worker must be able to have pride in his or her work if they are to do their best. Management has the power to remove these barriers or create them. Good leaders will find ways to remove them. Make employees feel secure enough to express ideas and ask questions. Many employees are afraid to ask questions, even if they don't understand what is to be done or how to do it. When employees are afraid, they will continue to do things wrong or just not do them at all. If people feel secure, then they will be more productive and produce better quality. People in different areas or departments must work in teams. Top management erects the barriers through their style and methods of management, and they are the ones who can break the barriers down. Management must promote teamwork. Working in teams will solve many problems and will improve quality and productivity. Problems with quality and productivity are caused by the system, not by individuals. By raising the level of expectations from the workers, Without providing the means of accomplishing it, the workers will develop a feeling of resentment towards the management. Posters and slogans generate frustration and resentment. They are directed at the wrong group, that is workers, instead of management. A huge contributor to poor quality and waste is quota. Everyone works at different speeds. There is no way of changing this. If you set the quota at the average of workers' production rate, then half will be faster than the quota, and half will be slower. The workers, who are exceeding the quota, will slow down. It is worse for the slower workers. They will feel the pressure on them, to meet the targets. Though they work hard, they will find the only way to meet the quota, is to rush, and compromise on quality. Individual performance reviews are a great barrier to pride of achievement. Allow people to take pride in their workmanship. Management must foster a learning environment in the organization where workers and management learn new ways to improve things. Management must take on the 14 points wholeheartedly. They must explain the new philosophy to everyone in the company so that everybody as a team can work toward the common goal.